Welcome to a special episode of Sealed for Good, where we round up our look at the major changes to the latest version of AS3740, the standard for internal wet areas. Over the past few weeks, we've covered all the major changes of the standard and explored its potential impact on design, construction, and the physical installation of the membrane system. This week, we'll look at the provisions included in the standard for membrane inspection. As we touched on last week, this represents a notable emphasis on the physical installation and its importance to the success of the waterproofing system. So let's take a look at what the standard mentions about the physical inspection. A visual inspection shall be conducted prior to the installation of any overlaying finish in order to ensure the integrity of the membrane. The purpose of the visual inspection is to check for continuity of the membrane and any obvious installation defects such as pinholes, dry film thickness, adequacy of fillets, transitions, bonding and vertical termination heights, location and adequacy of water stops. Again, the new language states that a visual inspection shall be conducted prior to the installation of any overlaying finish. In other words, this is a mandatory step under the standard and the NCC where you're using AS37 as your deemed to satisfy. It can be argued, however, that this may raise questions as to where the responsibility lies for the final inspection and who signs off on it. For example, the waterproofing contractor or the builder site supervisor, or is this the responsibility of an independent body? Extra provisions have been made for additional elective testing, including qualitative measures beyond the basic visual inspection. This ensures a more robust and definitive method of assessing the integrity of the membrane system and reiterates the standards emphasis on the importance of the physical installation and the accountability of the contractor installing the works. While this additional testing is not mandatory, it can be seen as a prudent step given the associated cost if a leak is found after the surface finishes are laid. Details for the relevant types of tests have been provided, ranging from general flood testing to ultrasonic film thickness and seam probe testing for liquid and sheet-based system respectively. It also makes recommendations for conducting regular checks during the installation with regards to wet film testing. Based on the findings of the inspection, the builder can proceed with coordinating overlay finishes or the waterproofing contractor must be re-engaged to make necessary repairs to meet compliance. Together with the pre-inspection safeguards we talked about in last week's episode, the provisions for post-inspections reiterate the standards efforts at improving the quality and overall efficiency of the waterproofing application as a construction process. It also aims at governing the waterproofing installation with the same scrutiny awarded to other trades based on risk assessment of the quantitative cost when something goes wrong. So this concludes our series on the updates to AS3740. And you may be asking yourself, okay, so where to from here? So the first thing is protect yourself. If you're a contractor, check your contracts. What is the detail that's referenced? Is it specifically AS3740 2021? Or is it one of the other pathways that's referenced in the NCC? Ensure you know the correct detail and that the client has provided enough for you to effectively install the membrane system. Have a look at the specifics in the NCC that relate to the type of projects you engage in. The NCC is free to download. Purchase a copy of AS 37 2021. This is critical and it's available from the Standard Australia website. Understand that you're not alone and get to know your local waterproofing consultants. Organise a meeting, catch up for a coffee and even invite your clients and builders to understand not only who they are but also the issues they come across so you don't become a statistic. Join industry bodies that are relevant to your industry. For example, the MBA, the HIA, ACRA, and of course, the AIW, the Australian Institute of Waterproofing. Use technology apps that track your work. These can be used for both QC and as a guide to ensure you have the correct detail. And make the most of the current noise around the new NCC and standards. 
There is currently a lot of awareness that's been generated. Use this to start new conversation with your customers and make them aware. This is an opportunity to add processes to your day to day, like the inspection checklist and update your ITPs. And for anything product related, Grips has a technical support department and field staff that are trained to guide waterproofing professionals. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you on our next installments. Until then, happy waterproofing.